Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey guys. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Coach Nino Villa. I'm a disciple of Christ, husband, father, and a financial coach. And uh, I'm here in the greater Phoenix area where it's like 110 degrees outside today. It is a hot one. And uh, it's, it's just, uh, just past five local time. So who do we got in the room? Hey, Coach Andrew. Thanks for the hearts, man. Appreciate that. Shirley, welcome, welcome. Where's everybody viewing in from tonight? Springfield, Missouri. Well, welcome. Welcome back, Shirley. Thanks for hanging out. Ohio. So tonight I wanted to just uh, take an opportunity to talk about Dave Ramsey's seven baby steps. Uh, for those who are familiar, um, it might be a review or just an opportunity to ask questions and get uh, gain some clarity on the different steps. And for those of you that are not familiar, uh, it'll be a great introduction to um, a way to really take control of your money. So as I said before, I'm a disciple of Christ, a husband, a father, and I'm a financial coach. And uh, the principles I like to teach from are the same as Dave Ramsey's. So why ins instead of reinventing the wheel, I like to just hop on uh, Periscope and, and help people understand those principles so that they can execute them. And I think that's what a coach does. A coach comes alongside somebody, helps them to devise a plan and execute that plan. And so that's what I'm here to do. So let's just jump right into it. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so if you're not familiar with Dave Ramsey, he's a financial guru, he's a best-selling author, and he has a um, syndicated radio show where people call in and talk about finances. And he came up with a system to, for everybody to win with money, right? You don't have to make a ton of money to execute. We live, Dave, that's awesome, Andrew. I love to hear that. That's awesome, right? Dave Ramsey and his principles... That, Everybody can execute on his principles, and uh, you don't need to make a six-figure income to really win with money, and that's what I really like about it. And so there are seven very easy steps to follow. Um, easy in the sense that there's only seven, and and they're not difficult to kind of remember what they are, uh, and so they're easy that way. They're a lot harder to execute, um, especially uh, because he has some really radical ideas about how like you should pay cash for things instead of always taking out credit. So love the Dave Ramsey. So let's, let's, I got my little trusty whiteboard here. Step number one. Andrew, I'm going to ask for just a little bit of engagement since you already know it. Why don't you tell everybody else what step number one is? I mean, I'll start writing it, but let's see. Baby emergency fund. That's right. So step number one, real simple. All you need is a thousand dollars in the bank to start your emergency fund. Yes, it's a it's a small amount for an emergency fund, but we'll build it up later. Step number one, get a thousand dollars in the bank for that rainy day, so that you're not um, relying on credit cards if something does happen. So if you already have $1,000 in the bank, congratulations, you've already completed baby step number one. But if you don't have $1,000 in the bank yet, just sitting aside for an emergency, that's the first thing you're gonna wanna do. Now I should have opened by saying, before you can even do step one, you have to do what, what I like to call step zero, and that means you have to be on a budget. And if you're not on a budget, I can help you with that. That's what I like to do. I like to help people devise a plan and execute that plan. So if you're not on a budget, let's get you on a budget, and then let's get you to step number one, $1,000 in the bank. Step number two. This is the step I'm currently on. I'm currently on step number two, because step number two is the debt snowball. And so if you're not familiar with what a debt snowball is, yep, Coach Andrew's got it. He knows. Step number two, that debt snowball. If you're not familiar with debt snowball, all this means is you're simply going to list all of your debt on paper. First and foremost, I know that can be scary. That can be a scary thought. When my wife and I had to sit down and actually write out our debt, that was a scary process. So you're going to write out all of your debt except your mortgage. 
And so for my wife and I, that number was well over $100,000. Scary, scary. But it's empowering once you do it because then you know what you're up against. So the debt snowball, you're gonna list your debts from smallest to largest by the amount owed. And once you um, list out all that debt, you're gonna pay the minimum monthly payment on all of your debt except the smallest. On the smallest debt, you're going to try to throw every dollar you can find in your budget at that at that debt. And once it's gone, once that debt is paid, you're gonna snowball that payment that you were making into the next debt. So let me give you a quick example. For my wife and I, she had a car payment of $200. And when, uh, when we found Dave Ramsey's plan, we decided to sell her car so that we get that $200 back. Well, we had a different loan on a water softener for $130. So once we eliminated this, this payment of $200, we then rolled it into this $130 we're paying on this loan for a new minimum monthly payment of $330. Okay, so instead of sending only $130, we were now sending $330 as a minimum monthly payment on that other loan. We would send more if we had more, but a bare minimum of $330. So that's the debt snowball. You're gonna list out all your debts, smallest to largest. Once you get rid of one debt, you're gonna roll that payment into the next one, and so on and so forth. So by the time we were paying off our other car, the car we kept, it had a minimum monthly payment of $400. We were sending a new minimum monthly payment of $730 a month. And so we paid it off very, very quickly. So that's step number two, and you're going to be there a while. My wife and I have been working the Dave Ramsey plan since February of 2013. We've paid off more than $40,000 worth of debt in those two years, but we still have a mountain of student loan debt to climb out of, and so um, we're going to be there a while, about a three-year plan. Three-year plan, get us out of debt. Once you are out of debt, you move on to step number three. Step number three Coach Andrew, are you still with me? What's step number three? Three to six months emergency fund. That's right, buddy. You got it. Step number three, you're going to take this $1,000 and you're going to beef it up. right? You're going to have a true emergency fund. And the emergency fund is supposed to be equivalent to three to six months of expenses. I like the number three to six months of what's going on, AJ? Thanks for joining. Um, if you guys haven't already, would you click that little icon down at the bottom and share this broadcast so that your followers have an opportunity to see the, uh, the, the um, Dave Ramsey steps for themselves? I appreciate that, Andrew. Thank you for, for uh, resharing the broadcast. So step number three, that fully funded emergency fund. It's supposed to be three to six months of expenses. I like three to six months of income. My income's higher than my expenses. That just means I'll have more money in the bank. And so for you know, for the average person, you know, making anywhere between fifty and a hundred thousand um, dollars, you know, that number might be like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in the bank. So once you're out of debt, you can start to beef up that emergency fund and uh, have three to six months of expenses. Uh, for my my uh, household, my my wife and I, that number is going to be about fifteen thousand dollars. We'll be really comfortable with $15,000 in the bank. So that's the first three steps so far. Once you um, fund your emergency fund, you're gonna move on to step four. Step four is 15% into retirement. And so um, what you might notice is you're like, wait a minute, step four, 15% into retirement. What if I'm already putting into retirement before I get to step four? Well, Dave Ramsey would teach you that you actually would want to stop um, uh, contributing to your your um, retirement until you get out of debt. And so I'm coaching a couple that they did that, right? They, they decided, okay, we're going to press pause on the 401k and we're going to get ourselves out of debt. And it moved the timeline for them significantly. Had they not done that, they would have been in debt for four years. By making that decision, they'll be uh, debt free in 18 months. So significant difference. Sorry about that, guys. Let me get rid of these notifications. 
So a significant difference in the timeline based off of what you're doing here. So when you get to step four, you're gonna um, take 15% of your household income and you're gonna just sock that away for retirement. Now step number four and step number five kind of happen at the same time. If you have children or if you're planning on paying for your own college, this is where you would do college funding. And so once you're out of debt and you've beefed up your emergency fund, four and five kind of happen at the same time. You're just gonna schedule 15% of your pay to go into retirement, and then you're also going to start setting aside uh, money for college if that applies. If it doesn't apply to you, then you get to skip step number five and go right to step number six. Step number six, pay off the house. All right, so if you remember back in step number two, we're listing out all of our debts except the mortgage. Okay, so that when we get down to step number six, we take every extra dollar we can find in our budget and we start throwing it at the house so that we can pay off the house early. So I already shared with you, I'm on a three-year plan to get out of debt. What about the government pension? Always a great question. So Dave Ramsey would always teach you that you want to always... Um, save for your own retirement and that if you get pension from um, your employer or you have some other type of um, like even social security let's you know for retirement that that's all gravy so 15 percent of your income control your money make sure you have a retirement and then if you have something on top of that that is just gravy absolute gravy right C completely kind of unexpected and just um, gravy on top of it. And so at step six, you're going to pay off that house as quickly as possible. As I was sharing, we'll be out of debt in about three years. Does a home equity loan count as debt number two or six? Great question. Um, a home equity loan, nine times out of 10 is going to be step number two, and you're going to list it with step number two. The only time you would list it with uh, step number six is if it's over a certain percentage of your income. And so um, I don't remember exactly what percentage Dave Ramsey teaches, but let's just call it 50, right? If it's over 50% of your income, so let's say you make $50,000 a year and you have a home equity line or uh, you know a second mortgage for more than $25,000, then you'll, you'll wait until baby step number six. But if it's less than that, you're gonna put it in step number two and, uh, and just debt snowball it. Great question, thanks for the question. So you're gonna pay off that house as quickly as possible. Once we get out of debt in three years, it'll be another approximately five years until we uh, pay off the house. That means I will be in my early 40s and I won't have a payment in the world. I won't have any more student loan debts, I won't have a mortgage, and so I will have freed up my income to, to um, you know enjoy it, but to also um, be a better steward of it. Uh, <laughs> yes, buddy, I know you want me in the East Valley. That's the, that's the plan, right? But God's got to guide the steps. So once I pay off the house, step number seven is really not much of a step except it's just to live like no one else. Live and give like no one else. Once I have all that income freed up, once I, I am not shelling out my hard-earned income in the form of payments on the house and the student loans, and we've already gotten rid of the car note, but for most people, a car note and credit card debt. Once you have all that money coming back into your pocket, you can start to buy assets instead of liabilities. You can buy mutual funds and invest. You can buy real estate and invest, and you can buy things that will actually make you money. You can start to live and give like no one else. Tell them I said hello and that uh, I send my love. So that's the, uh, that's the seven baby steps. Dave Ramsey's seven baby steps covered pretty quickly. But like I said, it, it really is just that easy. They're not as easy to execute, but Dave Ramsey does a great job of, of putting together a plan that is very, very simple to follow. Baby step one. Get $1,000 in the bank and put it to the side as an emergency fund so that you're not tempted to reach for the credit cards every single time you, you uh, get into an emergency. 
you know, baby step number two, probably the hardest baby step, right, is listing out all of that debt, figuring out exactly what you owe, listing it from smallest to largest, and start tearing through it with a ven- vengeance. And I'll share with you guys, you you can't you can't go at debt kind of willy nilly. You can't be like, okay, well, this sounds good. I think I'm gonna do that. No, 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 no. You have to get fired up. You have to start thinking to yourself like, I owe people money. Ew, I owe people money. I owe the bank a hundred thousand dollars for something I already got. Right? I, I already got the piece of paper. What? And you just gotta you gotta start getting really mad. And it's gotta it's gotta leave a bad taste in your mouth. And then you gotta you gotta let that sink down in your stomach and you just gotta get disgusted. You gotta get absolutely disgusted at the idea that you owe somebody else money. It's gotta make you sick to your stomach. That's the only way you'll move on this. If you don't get sick to your stomach at the idea that you owe somebody else money, you're not gonna move on this. You you can't be like, oh, this sounds good. That sounds cool. It would it would be really nice to have my income back. No, you got to get fed up at the idea that you owe somebody four hundred dollars a month for your car. It's gotta it's gotta make you want to vomit. And when you when you get there, when you get really fired up and you get really passionate, you'll start tearing through debt and you'll pay off forty thousand dollars worth of debt in two years, making seventy thousand dollars a year. Right, so think about that. That's twenty grand a year, just going out in debt payments, so that I can get myself out of debt, so that I can free up my income and I can regain control of my finances. And you're going to be there a while. You're going to be in step two for eighteen months, for three years, for five years, depending on what your income is and what your debt is. But you can do it, and I can help. That's what I do as a financial coach. I come alongside of you. I help you devise a plan and execute that plan. The plan's worked for my wife and I. It's working for the clients that I serve already, and I would love to help you guys. All you have to do is hit me up on any any medium you want. Every handle is at Coach Nino Villa. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, at Coach Nino Villa at gmail.com. Let me help you devise a plan and execute that plan. And once you're out of the debt, think about this. Once you're out of debt, let's say that freed up like $2,000 worth of income. Earlier I was saying baby step three is a fully funded emergency fund. Let's say you wanted 20 grand in the bank as a nice emergency fund, a buffer between you and Murphy. If you freed up $2,000 of your income every single month, how many months would it take you to have 20 grand in the bank? Easy math, the answer is 10. Right? 10 months to have 20 grand just chilling in the bank. It wouldn't even take a full year. It wouldn't even take a full year. So then you have a fully funded emergency fund and then you start to um, save for retirement. You start saving for college if it applies, and you start paying down the house. And imagine that. Imagine if you freed up $2,000 a month, and let's say you were already, you know, uh, because I just don't want to do the math, but let's say the $2,000 was still even after the 15% and college. How quickly could you pay off your mortgage if you were throwing an extra $2,000 at it every single month? Every month an extra $2,000 on top of whatever the regular payment is. You would burn through that so quickly. You'd save your t- yourself a ton of money in interest. Um, six and a half years. See, Anthony's done the math. And so, um, you know, that's that's four, five, and six all kind of happening at the same time. You're investing in your um, retirement, you're saving for college, and you're paying down the house. And then when you don't have a payment in the world, except for your just basic, you know, your, your electricity, your utilities, you know, you have to still go shopping and buy food. When those are the only expenses you have every single month, how much money would you have to make to really live off of? See, I've also done that calculation. If I didn't have any payments and I was just um, paying for my utilities and my regular expenses, I could live off of $30,000 a year. 
less than half of what I make now. And how much money would I have to have invested making me 10% every single year to just live off the interest? Well, that number is only $300,000. See, we have been lied to or, or we've been misguided in believing that, you know, to have financial freedom, we need to make millions of dollars. We have to have a six-figure income every single year if we ever want to gain financial freedom. And I'm telling you that that's bogus. I'm telling you that I would have financial freedom once I'm out of debt and I don't have any more payments, making $30,000 a year, which means I'd only have to have $300,000 invested. Now, is that my only goal? Heck No. Heck no. I'll have three times that amount. I'll have ten times that amount. I will have so much more than that, but I know that it's obtainable. And I think we, as a culture, as a society, don't go after things when we don't think they're obtainable. And I'm here to tell you, you can do it. You can obtain financial freedom, and you don't need to make a six-figure income to do it. You don't need to make millions of dollars to become financially free. You know, I really enjoy other people on Periscope and Meerkat who are streaming about how they're winning at life and and they're millionaires and they're going to help you become a millionaire. But I'm here to tell you that I can get you to financial freedom well before that. Well before that. You can be well on your way to financial freedom and you don't have to make that six-figure income and you don't have to have a million dollars. That's still the goal. We're still going to go after that, but you don't need it to be financially free. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me. I appreciate all the hearts, loving it up. Um, If you haven't done so already, make sure you click the little icon down at the bottom and reshare this broadcast. At this point, I'm going to wrap it up and sign off, but that way your followers can um, view the replay. Love you too, bro. Thanks for hanging out with me um, and listening to this yet again because you've heard it plenty. But it's always good to just refresh, right, and and hear it again. So, guys, thanks again for hanging out with me. Thank you for all the love. Make sure to reshare this broadcast so other people can benefit from the knowledge um, that I'm sharing. And if you haven't heard of Dave Ramsey, go check him out at DaveRamsey.com. You can find me everywhere at Coach Nino Villa. And until next time, guys, keep living God's way for God's glory.